action. Back to the Future 3 isn't necessarily a Western. It's a time travel movie with our characters that goes to the 1800s. And so we'll have horses and guns and shootouts and steam trains and all that stuff. But it's the West seen through the eyes of a kid from the 80s. What's your name, dude? Clint Eastwood. What kind of stupid name is that? In as much as Back to the Future appeals to the kid and everyone, I think being a cowboy appeals to the kid and everyone. I remember when there was talk of a sequel, and they said to me, if you were going to go somewhere, where would you want to go? And I said, well, the, you know, the Old West. I mean, you know, everybody wants to be a cowboy. And they were like, yeah, 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 we do too, we do too. Rather than use existing sets, the filmmakers decided to build the Hill Valley of 1885 from scratch. When it's dressed in their horses and wagons there, and, you know, people walking around with gun belts on, it just, it really feels like you've, you step back in time. And action! They just don't build sets like this. It was so incredibly detailed and uh, thorough and well thought out that it was an incredible thrill to actually hear, you know, like, rolling, action, and, like, stepping out in the street with my six-shooter, you know? I mean, it was pretty, pretty wild. Just tell me one thing. Where did you learn to shoot like that? 7-Eleven. OK, let's shoot. The launching pad for Marty's voyage to the past was the Pohatchee Drive-In. The scene required the filmmakers to shoot on location in Monument Valley. When our hero goes back to the 1880s, the first image that the audience has to see is one that's immediately recognizable, that they go, oh, yes, we're in the West. And that, that had to be Monument Valley. And action! Doc! If I drive straight towards the screen, I'm going to crash into those Indians. Marty, you're not thinking fourth dimensionally. The West is America's mythology. Indians! And it's romantic because we're going back to a time which people think back upon with kind of a, wouldn't that have been cool to run around in the West? I mean, anytime you got guys riding around on horses, let's face it, a guy looks a lot cooler riding a horse than he does driving a Plymouth. I'm a brown at your service, Miss. Clayton! A new character is introduced in Back to the Future Part 3. Mary Steenburgen is Clara Clayton, the woman that Doc falls madly in love with. I think it's been fun for Chris because I don't think people have necessarily thought of him as a romantic leading man. But every woman on this set has been watching him going, oh, like this, you know, because he's really wonderful. He's really fantastically romantic in the part. Steenburgen and co-star Christopher Lloyd survived the rigors of shooting the action sequences, but it was the Hill Valley Festival dance scene that proved to be the most dangerous. Chris and I were kind of being overly zealous about our dancing one night, and he went one way and I went the other, and I tore a ligament in my foot, which made it not quite as much fun over the next few weeks to dance on it. But I found that what happened was I'd get so excited when they'd say action and we'd start to dance, it wouldn't really hurt until he'd say cut and then <laughs> I'd feel shooting pain going up my leg. But we had a great time. For Steenburgen, Back to the Future Part 3 was more than just a love story. The last third of the film, I, f I feel like a female Indiana Jones, you know. <laughs> I loved it. It's really physical and really full of action, and it was one of the reasons why I wanted to do it, because I haven't really done that. The goal of director Zemeckis was to create a spectacular climax to the film. To stage the scene, he would have to coordinate the actors, a live steam train, pyrotechnics and special effects, and countless technicians. I'll say, Doc, Doc, you know, come in. He'll listen to his walkie-talkie, and I'll lift it up, and I'll say, we're going at, a, at a 25 miles an hour. Cruise at a steady 25 miles an hour, Doc. OK, buddy, I'm coming aboard. Takes off his hat, smoke's going all this time, climbs out, walks along. The red about to blow! Then 
round goes. One, two, three, fire! Boom! I don't know if part three was especially more physically demanding than part two. It just seemed like there was something new every day. Just running and jumping and falling and being dragged. And then also a lot of stuff on the train, running along the tops of the train. I guess the major physical aspect of part three was the riding. There was one time we were doing a, a running shot and the camera truck was beside me and I was just flat out on this horse. And then when we stopped, the camera guy said he was up to 33. So uh, it was kind of neat to know I had a horse going that fast. I'll tell you from experience though, if you're going horseback riding, don't wear boxers, wear jockeys. Boxers will really mess you up. No Western town would be complete without a villain. Tom Wilson plays Buford Mad Dog Tannen, the first in a long line of Hill Valley bullies. He is the evil incarnate of Hill Valley, California. Just imagine Biff with guns. You know, it's just not a pretty picture. I'll hunt you and shoot you down like a duck. It's dog, Buford. Shoot him down like a dog. Buford is Biff's worst intentions realized and unleashed. Because it's the Old West, Buford has the freedom to do the things that Biff only dreams about. Buford can actually shoot people. He's just a bad guy. Ain't you gonna introduce me to the lady? I'd like a dance. I wouldn't give you that pleasure. You'll just have to go ahead and shoot. This is not a documentary about what it was like to live in California in 1885. This is about, like, the West, good guys and bad guys. Check your problems at the door and sit down and have a good time. And if you like it, you know, go three or four or five more times. <laughs>